uh, our uh, next speaker is uh, Dr. Shami Gupta uh, for R from RKM VRI. And he will be talking about onset of synchronization in networks of second order Kuramoto oscillators with delayed, uh, with delayed coupling exact results. Dr. Gupta, over to you. So this is fine, right? Yes. Okay, so let me start by uh, thanking the organizers for the invitation. And I'm particularly happy that one of my or our former students, Shohili, is hosting the session. So he has, she has been our master's student in the university. So I'm going to talk about some work in nonlinear dynamics. So I guess a bit uh, off the main theme of, uh, I mean, most of the talks, if not all the talks are on statistical physics. So, okay, how do I go to the next one? Yeah. So this is some work that I did with two postdoctoral fellows, David Mithivier and Lucas Wetzel. David is at Ecole Polytechnic now, and Lucas is at Max Planck Institute. And this work got published in PhysRev Research last year. So the theme, the main theme that I want to talk about is that of spontaneous synchronization. So it's a nonlinear dynamical phenomenon in which what happens is that you have a bunch of systems, each one bunch of units rather, each one of them has got its own frequency of oscillation. And then when, when you put them together so that there is some interaction between them, they spontaneously evolve to a state in which they start to act in unison in the sense that they start to oscillate at a common frequency. Some examples are uh, cardiac pacemaker cells where there are these uh, many, uh, very many uh, cardiac cells and they send out electrical signals and they have to, of course, coordinate among themselves so that the heart can you know, pump blood uh, in a synchronous fashion. And the second example is that of uh, fireflies. But the example that I'm going to talk about today or, and focus on is that of electrical power grids and how phase synchronization happens in electrical power grids. So what's an electrical power grid? So a grid comprises a large number of oscillators. So by oscillators, what I mean is you have either generators or motors. You have generators at the power supply units and you have motors at the customer ends. And they, of course, these generators and motors, they exhibit self-sustained oscillators, uh, self-sustained oscillations. And uh, uh, well, when they are put in uh, interaction with one another. So here, uh, the second picture shows the electrical power grid network of India, and this is the UK network. Uh, well, the, when they are put in interaction with one another, the units, they rotate in synchrony at the grid, grid frequency. For example, for India, the grid frequency is 50 hertz. And if I go into microscopic details, I mean, basically what you have is either you take the example of generator or the motor. Basically what you have is, okay, this is a very simplistic cartoon, but what you have is you have a magnet and you have a shaft, which is either rotating or being rotated. I mean, if it is, uh, if there is an electrical current that flows into the shaft that makes it rotate, then uh, it, it becomes a motor. While at the, uh, at the uh, electrical supply unit, what you have is you rotate the shaft and that generates current because it, uh, the shaft cuts the magnetic field lines uh, caused by the magnet. So if I want to uh, describe the motion of this shaft, what I do is that I look at the deviation from the grid frequency, this capital omega, that's the grid frequency. So theta j, that's the angle describing the motion of the shaft. And the equation of motion that I can write down for this shaft is rather simple. So this is the angular momentum, the rate of change of angular momentum. I is the moment of inertia that is equal to PI. PI is the power that you generate at the generator end or the power that you consume at the motor end. This minus gamma d, d phi i dt that describes uh, dissipation because what is happening is that this shaft is rotating in the ambient medium and that causes some friction in the, that leads to some friction in the motion of the shaft and that is encoded in the second term. While the third term, 
uh, encodes uh, electrical coupling between one unit and all the other units. So this KGI, this is uh, uh, a quantity that just tells you that, you know, if KGI is going to be one, if jth and ith unit are connected, for example, take this example of this UK power grid network. So these red dots, these are the nodes of the network and KGI is going to be one if the nodes are connected and if they, if they are not connected, then KGI is going to be zero. And the coupling is of the following form. It's just because of the sinusoidal nature of the electrical current. It's of the form sine of phi j minus phi i, where phi j is the uh, angle for the jth unit and phi i is the angle for the ith unit. But the important thing to note is that, as you can see from this equation, phi i is the angle at time t and which is being affected by the angle of the jth node at an earlier instant, t minus tau. And what does tau do? Tau is telling me that there is going to be some transmission delay because you know all these grids are spatially separated. So it's not that they get instantaneously coupled electric, electro, electrically to one another. So tau, tau is a number that's larger than zero that just tells me the transmission delay that is happening because these electrical nodes are spatially separated. And what are the questions that one would like to know? Uh, you know, given an electrical grid network, the main questions that one would like to understand and address are, for example, what are the conditions of synchronization? That you know, what are the uh, you know range of parameter uh, range of values of the various parameters so that you have a synchrony in the sense that all the shafts they rotate at the same grid frequency. And what's the stability of such a state against a dynamical perturbation and structural failures? There could be you know, fluctuations in one or more links that may lead to outage. For example, here I've cited one example of an, uh, a blackout power outage that happened in India. That's precisely because of some high loading, like you know, some of the links started drawing uh, more power and therefore the electrical grid had to be shut down to avoid uh, accidents and so on. So these are the questions that one would like to understand. So here is the model. So as I've told you, this PI, let's uh, understand that PI is the power that is consumed or generated at the ith unit. So PR is going to be a random variable in the sense that it is going to vary from one unit to another as I will show soon, I mean, it is going to be a quench disorder random variable. For every unit, there is a certain power consumption or power generation uh, that takes place at that unit. Uh, spotlight, okay, say something, anyways. Okay, so, uh, so we are going to analyze this model, but not in full generality. We will uh, consider the case in which every unit is connected to everyone else. That is what we will, uh, what we know, you know, this is the mean field approximation. So, which is to say that KJI, this is just K by N, every unit is connected to everyone else. And then this can be, uh, you know, this model can be looked upon a, from a very different setting, namely that of particles, which are moving around on a circle, okay? So, phi is a angle variable. So therefore I can think of particles which are moving around on a circle. These red dots are the particles which are moving around. And uh, this is the equation, you know, it has the same form as the power grid equation. The first equation is telling me that the rate of change of angle is equal to the angular velocity. The second equation is just telling me that the rate of change of angular momentum is equal to, there is a dissipation term minus gamma vi there is a driving term gamma like omega i this is an this is a driving term this mimics this pi term in the grid network uh, the third term is the coupling term it just tells you how the different points the different uh, you know the red dots are connected to they they are coupled to one another uh, as i had mentioned this this external drive this omega i that mimics pi it's a, uh, it's what's the natural frequency of the of, 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 of these units. These units are known as oscillators. I mean, obviously, because uh, you know each oscillator is being characterized by an angular velocity and a phase. 
So the important thing to note is that this omega i term, it's a quench disordered random variable distributed according to a given distribution, g omega, that has got some finite mean. M is the moment of inertia, gamma is the damping constant. There's an alpha factor that I put in here. It's going to be inconsequential for the, for the talk, but you know, in the setting of Kuramoto model, it does have very important does have a very important role to play, which I'll not get to here. It's known as the phase frustration parameter. And tau is the time delay. It's just telling you that the uh, state of the variable at time t, theta i t, is going to be affected by the state of the thetas at a previous instant, t minus tau. So here is a here is a video of what happens if you just let the system evolve starting from an initial condition. So what I have done is that I have shown a, a, a you know a, a, a video of the time evolution of the system at three values of the coupling constant k. Let me just remind you, k is the coupling constant. It just tells you how strongly are the different units coupled to one another. And this is a low value of k, and the middle one is an intermediate value of k, and the last one is a large value of k. As you can Professor see- Professor Gupta, you have two more minutes. Yeah, fine. As you can see, if k is very small, then all, all, this, uh, all, all these points, they are doing random motion. They're, some are going, some are going in the clockwise direction, some in the anti-clockwise direction. While if k is large, then you have a phase, uh, a phase synchronized state in the sense that you know all the units are going together at the same frequency. And the question that we want to answer is, what's the critical value at which the unsynchronized state, namely the state on the left, loses its stability? And what's the nature of bifurcation from that state? So. And as far as we know, there are no previous studies of this model. So what are the main results? So of course, to characterize the system, you need to define an order parameter. So here an order parameter is going to be just the sum of e to the i theta j. That is to say that you know you have all these units, all these uh, points going around. So you draw a vector r, the length of which is going to tell me how many of them are, are like uh, close together on the circuit. And the main result is the following. What we show is that as a function of the time delay, so tau is the time delay, as a function of the time de delay, the uh, Kc, Kc is what? Kc is the critical value of the coupling at which the unsynchronized state loses its stability. It shows this very interesting oscillations in the sense that, you know, in statistical physics, typically if there is a time scale, then you don't expect the critical value, the critical value of the coupling to, you know, oscillate as a function of the time scale, but here it does oscillate. But more importantly, what happens is that depending on the value of the time delay, you may have a supercritical or a subcritical bifurcation from the unsynchronized to the synchronized state. So what it means in terms of picture is that here I plotted the order parameter as a function of the coupling. And let me just remind you that if you have a, sub, a supercritical bifurcation, then you have a, a second order phase transition that the, the, the system is unsynchronized up to a certain critical value. And then it, the, you know, so this order parameter changes continuously as a function of the coupling. While if you have a subcritical bifurcation, then you have something like a first order phase transition, that there is a critical value, there's a jump in the value of the order parameter. And what our exact results show is that depending on the value of tau, you may have alter you have alternating super and subcritical bifurcations. That is, you give me the value of tau, and then it may show a subcritical or a supercritical bifurcation, depending on the precise value of tau that you have provided me. So that's the main uh, main uh, main result, and I'll just quickly flash you know how do you get to such results, just to show that everything can be done analytically and exactly. So you need to, uh, to invoke kinetic theory and delay differential equations, and you need to do center manifold expansion, which is quite well known in uh, uh, well known in nonlinear dynamics. Uh, let me just keep the details of the analysis and let me just, uh, just to show that, you know, everything can be done exactly. And in fact, if there is a parallel between the analysis that I do, we do here and the Landau theory of uh, damping in uh, plasma, um, this Landau damping theory, uh, this is the center manifold expansion that uh, we did. So let me just 
come to the final conclusion. This is the main uh, take home message that you can take back if you wish, which is the following that there is a time scale in the system, which is the delay that's just telling you how are the different units going to interact with one another, what's the time delay in the system. And as a function of the delay, the system may show a subcritical or a supercritical bifurcation. And the critical point, I mean, the value of the critical strength, it oscillates as a function of delay. So it's not just de not just that the delay, so it's just a simple time scale. It does, in fact, determine whether you are going to see a first order or a second order phase transition. And the first order and second order phase transition, that makes a lot of sense in the context of power grid networks, because if you have a first order transition, then what it means is that the system is very sensitive in the sense that if you start with a synchronized state and if there is a little bit of fluctuation or some failure in the system, then it will just, you know, get to the unsynchronized state. I mean, this, uh, the, the, the power grid network would stop uh, uh, remaining to be synchronized. So open issues, of course, you know, we did it for the mean field coupling, but of course, what happens when you, uh, you know, generalize it to networks and uh, let me like, skip this autonomous and answers. So let me just, uh, you know, end the talk with the, you know, with the advertisement that this synchronization, it um, offers an uh, interdisciplinary field at the interface of uh, statistical physics and theory of differential equations, which I didn't uh, have have time to get into and kinetic theory and nonlinear dynamics. So thank you for your attention. I guess I stopped on time and uh, let me also uh, join others in wishing Tansir and Deepak uh, many more productive years. And uh, thanks to both of you for your guidance and uh, whatever you did in all these years. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gupta. Uh, questions? Uh, Shamik, how crucial is your uh, assumption of the uh, distribution of disorder being low? Yes, okay. O oops, sorry, did I do something? Yeah, okay. So this uh, uh, general thing, you know, let me just come to the result. Uh, yeah. So we have a result, I mean, that applies to like in, in any distribution, as you can see, I mean, the C3, uh, this parameter, it tells you whether you are going to have a supercritical or a subcritical bifurcation. And we have results for any distribution. I just showed the result for Lorentzian, but it could be any unimodal distribution. So long as it is unimodal, it is going to work. Okay, thanks, right. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I had one. Yeah. So in the context of power grids, uh -huh. I thought uh, there is a frequency like 50 hertz, which is standard. And why are we sort of discussing? Yeah, about we are looking distribution? at fluctuations about that 50 hertz. So this is the, you know, this is the 50 hertz, oh, this capital omega. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the average, of course, everyone is, uh, you know, rotating at 50 hertz. And I want to know what is the uh, deviation from that 50 hertz frequency? So what is the typical magnitude of these deviations? Uh, typical, okay, that depends on, of course, you know, the various factors, but I don't know when, what is the, uh, but you, you know, it, it's important to consider the fluctuation because oh, as yeah. I told you, these fluctuations may make the state unstable. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, I had one, uh, just place, place pasted it on the chat. Uh, what would be the effect of tau increasing with distance between the ith and the jth oscillators? Yeah, yeah, one can make tau a random variable. In in this case, of course, tau is just a constant number. But if you make tau a function of, of course, of course, it is going to be a function of the spatial separation between the units. But we haven't done that analysis. I mean, that would bring in another source of stochasticity into the dynamics. So that would make it even more complicated. I mean, this analysis itself was so uh, like complicated that, you know, we, we haven't done it, but we have that in mind as well. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, if not, uh, then let us thank Professor thank Shomik Gupta again.